Father, we come before you. You who is full of mercy. And we just want to learn more about you. Because if we don't know you, how can we share you with a world that doesn't know you? In the past couple of days, sessions we've been looking at the father's goodness and then we looked at the father's kindness and now we're looking at the father's mercy that we may taste and know that we may see that we may be like him in this world And I've been sharing these words and I've taken it from the scripture and what the scriptures say. Because I see there's a tendency for us to add meanings to words. And if we get the wrong meaning, we get the wrong idea of who the father is. And so I've always gone back to look at the Greek so that our minds can be renewed to the correct meaning that he is placing on his word, which is him. And we don't get caught up in our own meanings. So recap, we've been looking at the biblical understanding of the words goodness and kindness. And as I've studied these uh, scriptures I'm very taken up how these words are in interchangeable and how our English language and our translations really fall short of the depth of who he is and therefore we need to really Listen carefully to what he says about himself, because these words are about himself, his goodness, his kindness. And why is it important? It is important because we are likely to apply our own meaning of the words to the Father and will be approaching him with the incorrect perspectives. And I'm just going to give you a couple of illustrations here. All words have meaning. And what is the meaning that's applied to a word? And we can look at the word joint. And a joint can be a hinge. Or a joint can be a joint of meat. Or a joint can be a cannabis cigarette. And when we were teenagers, we used to use this word, I'll meet you at your joint, which we meant was our house. It was a slang word for where we lived. And we can have a concept of a joint meeting. So we can see that the word joint has multiple meanings. And unless we are seeing them in the correct context, we will get the wrong impression. And that's why I want to encourage us all to look at these words carefully and adjust our thinking so that we can know the Father. Because I hear many people use words and I hear them using their assumption. And I just want to give you a simple example here. Um, this is a live case of mine. Um, I'm working with a daughter-in-law. Her mother-in-law is 
uh, a woman that has had many husbands um, and always dropped them after a little while. And uh, my client was speaking to her mother-in-law and she said, what are you looking for in a man? And her answer is, I want a kind man. And then we had to just think, what did she mean by kind? And her meaning was somebody that let her do whatever she wanted to do and uh, just pampered her and spent lots of money on her. And if we approach our Heavenly Father with that sort of mindset of kindness, we are going to miss the mark completely. What we have discovered so far, goodness and kindness are interchangeable in the Greek. So when you read goodness, it might be this, this word. And when you read kindness, it's exactly the same word. And the Hebrew word of kindness is chesed. And that gave us a deeper meaning of the Father's kindness towards us. And it's a word that indicates an act that involves risk or rejection. So when we are stepping out in the world, being his ambassador, and we are showing kindness, it puts us in a place where we are vulnerable, where our act of kindness can be rejected. And I was thinking about unkindness as well. So I always try to look at the positive, but there's unkindness. And I was thinking of how many times I have said unkind words to my wife. And uh, it's good to just think about when we say something, are we being unkind? When we criticize, when we are sharp, when we respond from our flesh. So let's stay with the positive here. It's a word of risk and there is possible rejection. Now we want to explore the Father's quality of mercy. And the more I started dwell, to del delving into this word mercy, the more I was blown away. It, 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 it's such a deep word. And you know, our Father is, 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 is beyond our understanding. And the words that the Bible uses to describe the qualities of life are just endless as we explore the, the, the depth and it gives us a depth of the quality of our Father. Mercy appears in the Bible as it relates to forgiveness or withholding punishment. But it's not about the punishment per se that the word is actually uh, used. It's actually got a different understanding. So we might talk, use the word mercy in the Bible, and it might be a different word. And this word that I'm using today, um, we're going to be looking at the depth of its meaning. God the Father showed us mercy when he sacrificed his son on the cross to pay the price for our sins. And we are all very comfortable with that. And mercy is described as the compassionate treatment of those in distress, especially when it comes, when it is within one's power to punish or harm them. 
So think of the word mercy as when we look at when there's a disaster in the world and the Red Cross go out and uh, the mercy ministries go out. These are not people that have broken the law. They are people in distress. And when we start thinking of the word mercy and the father's mercy, it's because he saw we were in distress. He reached out in his goodness and his kindness. So the Greek word, and there's, there's uh, three words here, and the first word that I'm going to be looking at today is ilios, meaning an outward manifestation of pity. It's an outward manifestation. It assumes there is a need on, the, on part of the person receiving it. So we're reaching out in mercy because there we see a need, Father saw a need, so we reached out. And with that word mercy, there's always an adequate resources to meet that need from the Father who showed it. So he was not unable to meet whatever need we had. He reaches out to us. Now the verb is very interesting. And the verb is ilio, meaning to feel with sympathy, with sympathy, with the misery of another. So there's a real compassionate aspect to this Greek verb, ilio, that there is. I can see you are in distress and there's a action that is happening inside us. And it is a sympathy and it is the sympathy that is manifested in an act. So there's always an action when we have mercy. And we use this word in Matthew 18:33. And uh, I'm going to ask Margie now to read a passage, this passage from Matthew 18. Um, so Margie, if you can just read from where we discussed. Right, so it's Matthew 18, um, verses 27 to 35. So it's a bit long. It is from the Passion Translation. So if you want to follow me uh, in your Passion Bible, then you know I'll, I'll give you a moment to get it out, if that will help. Matthew 18, 23 to 35. Okay. The lessons of forgiveness in heaven's kingdom realm can be illustrated like this. There once was a king who had servants who had borrowed money from the royal treasury. He decided to settle accounts with each of them. As he began the process, it came to his attention that one of his servants owed him one billion dollars. So he summoned the servant before him and said to him, pay me what you owe me. When his servant was unable to repay this debt, the king ordered that he should be sold as a slave along with his wife and children and every possession they owned as payment towards his debt. The servant threw himself face down at his master's feet and begged for mercy. 
please be patient with me. Just give me more time and I will repay you all that I owe you. Upon hearing his pleas, the king had compassion on his servant and released him and forgave him his entire debt. No sooner had the servant left when he met, met one of his fellow servants who owed him $20,000. He seized him by the throat and began to choke him saying, you'd better pay me right now, everything you owe me. His fellow servant threw himself face down at his feet and begged, please be patient with me. If you'll just give me time, I will repay all that is owed. But the one who had his debt forgiven stubbornly refused to forgive what was owed him. He had his fellow servant thrown into prison and demanded he remain there until he repaid the debt in full. When his associates saw what he was what was going on, they were outraged and went to the king and told him the whole story. The king said to him, you scoundrel, is this the way you respond to my mercy? Because you begged me, I forgave you the massive debt you owed me. Why didn't you show the same mercy to your fellow servant that I showed to you? In a fury of anger, the king turned him over to the prison guards to be tortured until all his debt was paid. In the same way, my heavenly father will deal with any of you if you do not release forgiveness from your heart toward your fellow believer. Thank you, Margie. And what I want to focus in is on the word mercy, which was in verse 33. And it's the only time it's used in that passage. The others are compassion, a word that is splunk noi something or other. Uh, but there in that verse 33 is Elieo. And it's often translated as mercy, compassion, or pity. And it's a sympathy with the misery of another. And this is how our Father in heaven is. He has the sympathy for our misery and our difficult situations we are in, whatever our circumstances. Ephesians 2 verse 4 says but god being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us and here's an element of mercy that i want you to just be aware of being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us Mercy from the Father is extended towards us because of his great love for us. We cannot have mercy without love. And if we are going to be his ambassadors in this world, we must have this love, the same love the Father has for us, towards those who are in desperate situations. There is another part that is linked to the Father's mercy. And his mercy is upon generation after generation. See, it's, it's never ending. The Father is never ending in his mercy towards us. 
towards those who stand in great awe of God and fear him. And this morning we went into a place of worship where we were in awe of the Father. And that is the fear of this Lord where, where you just come into that place and you, you, you're just so overwhelmed by him and his greatness. Mercy is activated through our actions. And this is what he says to us out of Hebrews 14, 16. Therefore, we should come with boldness to the throne of grace. And now we're getting into another word, grace, which I will expand on later. So that we may receive mercy. So we have to approach him to receive mercy. There's an action on our part to receive mercy. And may find grace for help in time of need. Because the Father is merciful towards us, he would have us show mercy towards others. For judgment will be merciless to the one who has shown no mercy. And that whole passage of Matthew 18 that Margie read, that servant or that uh, person had no mercy. And the father in the end was merciless. He was thrown into the debtor's prison till he should pay all of his debt. But to the one who has shown mercy, mercy triumphs victoriously over judgment. So there's a number of elements when we think of the Father's mercy towards us. It's his great love, but we need to approach him and we need to, in the same way, extend it to those around us. Mercy is an act of the hev loving Heavenly Father towards us because we need it. Mercy is the Father's attitude to towards us in distress. Peace is the result experienced in our heart. When we receive his mercy, there is a peace that comes. But grace is something different, and I'll expand this in a later teaching. But just for the moment, grace, it is the Father's attitude towards those that cannot keep the law. So mercy is not all about the law. It's about people in distress. And us showing goodness and kindness to those and extending mercy towards them that need it and of course as we extend kindness it can be rejected and I asked this question I put it up here what are your experience of receiving and giving mercy to fellow human beings and I've had to do a lot of internal thinking and and just reflecting of when I've received mercy from fellow human beings and when I've shown mercy to fellow human beings. And well, I still am pondering this experience. So as we're gonna go just now into a open session, um, I would like you to experience, share your experiences if you have them, if you can find them, where you've received mercy from a fellow human being and given mercy to a fellow human being. 